Welcome to a Lightroom tutorial. My name is Matt, I'm with Creative 8, and I'm going to show you how to edit landscape photos and specifically sunset photos. I have here a picture I took up in Bear Lake, which is um, a lake in Utah, up in northern Utah, and I'm actually on the Idaho side when I shot this. And I shot this with my Canon 40D with the 24 to 105 L series lens. And I shot it in camera raw. I shoot most of my photos in camera raw just because it gives you additional control uh, over the photos. And oh, look, this is the before or this is the after photo. That's going to be a surprise, but uh, uh, surprise me. Um, yeah, this is the after photo. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to show you what I did to get from uh, the photo here to the left and to the photo here on the right, all within Lightroom. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start out on this photo, um, because this is the default import settings when it brought it in, which is, you know, it's not that bad of a photo, I think, if you first saw it. But now that you've seen uh, the after photo, it's quite significantly, significantly different. And it's all done within Lightroom. So first off, let's open our develop module which is shortcut D or you can go right up there and click on it. I love to use shortcuts because they are very time saving to me and uh, so uh, hopefully you can follow along. I'll do my best to try and explain what I'm doing. So first things first is we need to kind of bring out the tones here and the shadows that are kind of clipping so we're just going to kick back the blacks down to zero just because we don't need to, we'll, we'll pull them down uh, using uh, the tone curve and just basic contrast. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bump up our colors here and bring up our contrast just ever so slightly. Bring this recovery slider all the way over to the left because you can see here with that sunset it's going to be pretty drastic of a change bringing the recovery down. I know that in the final image it's I set it about halfway through that and uh, I'm going to throw some fill light in here just to kind of help bring in some detail in the image, though it looks very soft right now. Uh, we're going to go with that. Uh, the next thing is setting the tone curve. The tone curve is just like your um, the curve, um, editing the curves in Photoshop, but it does let you basically, um, oh, that was weird, what is this doing? Um, it lets you set where the beginning and end points are for shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. If, if you have Lightroom 5, it's a little different, I think. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go in here and adjust this. I pretty much do this all vis visually, just I kind of stare at it and boop, move it up and down. I don't try to pay attention too much to the values. I just like to drag it around until I feel like I got it where I want. And then just release it. Not trying... You know, paying attention to the values. Yeah, I like that contrast it puts in the cloud, bringing that down. And yeah, we'll bring that down just to kind of darken it because we'll bring that up later. Okay. I hope this turns out exactly or very close to the other one. Um, I oftentimes just work straight down here, and that's what I'm going to do here is just work my way through the palettes. <clears throat> okay. Don't think I messed much with the hues. Um, the blues, I know we're going to bump. I know I bumped the, uh, the saturation on that, and same thing with the greens, even though there wasn't very many. Definitely bump the yellows up just just slightly because if you bump them all the way up here, you kind of start losing detail in the clouds. So I like the tone that that has, but I don't like that it doesn't have any color. So kind of have to compromise. Just kind of move around by sliding it back and forth until I feel like I got it right. Which is right, right there. Oops. There we go. Okay, just, uh, just very slightly change the reg. I know that on import it did not set it to uh, the right camera profile. And uh, 
by default, if you haven't set a default import and picked this ahead of time, it usually goes into the Adobe stand, standard and the Adobe Camera Raw. I personally don't like any of these. I think they look hideous and the colors just never come out, in my opinion, what I should expect them to be if I were to look at them. So we're going to go to Camera sta Standard. Yeah, Camera Standard. You can try the camera landscape, which the colors look nice, but I feel like the contrast and the details here are just completely lost, which if you like it, that's fine. I didn't, so I chose to go with the camera standard and just left the default settings there. Okay, luminance values. Dig dark to blue down. If you do it too much, blue is one of those channels that uh, shows a lot of noise. So when you play with the blue, it uh, brings a lot of noise in usually, which in this case it doesn't. But I did darken it just ever so slightly. And reds, brighten it up just a little. Same thing with the purple. Actually, I think I darken it, which is kind of affecting this area right here. But I think that's probably good. <clears throat> okay, so from here, um, I leave the effects alone. I didn't apply a vignette or anything. I'm going to grab my gradient filter and apply a gradient from the sky down, which is actually pretty common doing landscape uh, photos. Usually when people shoot, they'll put a, a filter on their camera to kind of do this. But uh, since I don't have those kind of filters, I'm not uh, by, uh, I'm not a real big landscape photographer. So I don't have a lot of those extra pieces of equipment. So I'm going to do it here in Lightroom, which is great, this great this graduated filter. I think I said gradient, but it's actually called the graduated filter. It's perfect for that. So I'm going to drop the exposure down to probably almost about two-thirds, maybe not quite there, and just slightly boost that increase the contrast just slightly slightly increase the clarity I can't remember if I applied a color to this I don't think I did I can go back and double check if it doesn't look right but uh, yeah that that's what I did for the sky and then I created another um, using the the adjustment brush here we're gonna edit the camper because I, I took the shot because one it hid the sun right here and allowed me still to capture the sunset but also it prevented any lens flares and and glares which nor normally shooting with the uh, an L-series lens you really usually don't get a whole lot of that unless you're shooting well you know in, uh, in the front of the shooting directly into the sun and even then it's very minimal compared to other lenses but I really didn't want to have to do that so I, I chose to kind of hide it behind this uh, old, it was, it's, I don't know how many years it's been there, but uh, this old camper, and then I wanted to bring out its, its its chrome look later on. So instead of shooting multiple exposures, I just shot one one exposure in RAW and wanted to see how much I could pull out of this later and do with just editing. So we're going to go through and just kind of paint in a quick mask here. You want to make sure auto mask is selected. It'll try to detect the edges for you and basically, um, yeah, save you from having to be exactly perfect on the uh, edges of the uh, whatever it is you may be drawing on. So I think I've got that. And just to be do double sure, I'll put my mouse right over it and it'll actually show me the masking until it actually kind of got out of it right here. So I'm going to erase it right around here so there's not a halo. And I've noticed that it'll actually, the auto mask feature, which is not on, usually works more so, you want to be more cautious of the inward circle than the outward circle. The outward circle is just showing you where it's feathering out to. Um, and so you want to just get as close as you can to those edges with that inward inner circle. Okay. And again, I'm just going to basically highlight over that to see if I missed anything that I did right there.
Okay, perfect. All right, so here uh, I increased the exposure about two thirds a stop, bumped up the contrast quite a bit, and I think I added a little bit of brightness. I increased the saturation. Actually, I pulled that back on this one. Increased the clarity as well as the sharpness just slightly. And then I tinted it a red color, just a light, very warm color. And this will be important later because there's one more graduated filter that I'm going to apply to the bottom. And you'll see why that is. Okay, so with that done, let's apply the next graduated filter on the bottom of the image. And I'm just going to go somewhere and drag up and try to align it with the horizon and pull it up just past it, just so slightly because it really doesn't apply very much once you get past that halfway point. And I'm going to go into the settings and give it a green tint, a warm green tint right here. And if you, the more you pull it up in this direction, the more green it's gonna apply. And I picked up color right about roughly right here. Okay. And I didn't want it that bright. Definitely increase the contrast, it's very low. Okay. I need to put more green into it. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna pull the exposure just slightly up because I'm looking at my histogram and it's looking a little dark. Okay, so I think that's just about where I had it. There was one other thing I did to it, which was a split toning. And with this, I gave the highlights a very warm yellow, which is actually, I think it was actually right at 45. And it was actually set pretty high on the saturation. I think it was in the 70s. And then the shadows, I gave it a warm blue tint I don't remember the exact number, but it was about right here, I think, and it was more blue than that. I was turning it green. And uh, it just very lightly, very lightly was in there. Okay, so let's see and kind of compare. Going back to the grid shortcut G to kind of see what the difference is. And wow, there's actually quite a big difference in the color on both of these. And I'm wondering what it is that I did so different because this one's a lot more warmer and uh, the other one's a lot more greener. Yeah, see 209. Goodness, it's a lot different. Let's see if we can try to match them. So, let's see, this needs to go up a little more and this needs to come down just a little bit. Probably pull that back a little. I think that was the big one, probably the uh, split toning. That changed it, but it's still the reds in here. The yellows and reds are more yellow. So let's go to the color, hue, and oranges. We're going to pull it back. Yep, that's, what, that's one thing I do remember I forgot to do. So I pushed back these oranges into the reds, and I made the reds a lot more redder, which doesn't seem to do much. Okay. We'll see what that does for us. Okay. That's a lot closer. The blues, though. See, even... I, mean, I, I spent a lot more time on it than I did with the, on this one, but uh, I think you get the idea um, of what I did because they're both still pretty close. Although I do like this one, I, I did spend much more time on this one than the one I'm going through with you <clears throat> on. But hey, that's okay. That's that's what happens. So uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial on uh, editing landscape photos, um, specifically the sunsets. I uh, hope you learned a lot and I look forward to seeing you around some more. Please uh, leave some comments and some feedback. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.